Update on shop progress. Bean planter's done. Getting it folded up. Get this thing out of here. So we did put new wedge boxes on this thing, which are the control boxes for the seed meters and all that stuff. So now we don't need the brown box anymore. We're running it all through the 2630 display, which is awesome. No more two screens and a lot more user friendly, which is gonna be sweet. Of this closing system, Dad. I don't know. Let's see. It. We're gonna have to try it out. What's their theory behind this system? I believe it's something to do with lifting the soil beside the trench so that the seed can be packed in better. I think what it's supposed to do is disturb or crush the sidewalls of the V in that the opener makes, crushing it shut, not the lifting the seed. Wow. Breaks up that hard sidewall of the V with these little discs that are totally different angled and shaped than a case system and then this little bugger packs it all back down we are only trying four because they're very expensive and we don't know if they're going to work in our rocks but there is a little rock guard here that's supposed to block the rocks from getting jammed in there which we will see how they work and see how they work in our gumbo mud too it's going to be the mud yeah that's why we have them spaced out all weird to try them in different conditions. Obviously going around the edge of the field, this is gonna get extreme mud. This is gonna be a nice loose dirt in the middle of the planter, normally dry. Then we have them in between the tire tracks where it is a known problem for compaction and also for mud that squeezes up in between the tires. We got those things adjusted. Now we gotta fold it up, make sure that all this new stuff on the frame doesn't hit that tank. If it does, you have to do more retrofitting. You ready to watch stuff get crushed and wrecked? What are you doing? I'm getting plugs for the hydraulics. <laughs> Cylinder all is good. Everything seems so tight, but I never looked at what it looked like before. If it was tight like this or not. I think it'll ride. I think we'll send it. Air Force One planter, planter style. There it goes. Supposed to be ready. Does this fit your hand? Yeah, it does. Perfect. Does this? Perfect. Teet, you want to teach America and the world how to groom properly? 
Well, I'm not saying it's properly, it's just the way I do it. Because anybody can do stuff like this and make a dust. I don't like that. So I just gently push it, gathering up large debris. And then that's when the little floor scrubber comes in play to clean up the left behind powder. This powder. Yeah. That's what the floor scrubber's for. Yep. The brooms are for large debris only. And you never go into the oil with a broom neither. This looks like oil residue. No, no, I'm lifting. Oh, there's lifting involved also. Well, that ain't just to hold a broom. You gotta know what you're doing. <laughs> Hard to drive this thing one-handed. This is gonna take a while. This is hard work. You want to switch? The reason I look like I do. <laughs> so fit and ripped. Feels good when the shop looks like this. I'm sweating so bad from running that big outfit that I gave it to the big Swede. He can finish up. I did almost half of the shop. Pretty good. Ooh. Ooh. That's nasty. Oh, yeah. Big Black in. This is the truck we call Big Black. Brought this in, putting new steer tires on it. We do not personally put those tires on. We bring them to the professionals. They balance it, make sure they are good. Put obviously virgin tires on there. So we're gonna take those off, take them down to Twin Valley, get them to put new tires on. Then we're gonna bring this truck and trailer into our local mechanic shop and get it inspected. Legally, farmers do not need to have their trucks inspected. We inspect all of our trucks that are on the road a lot. Just reliability reasons, keep them in tip-top shape, and minimize the big expenses. We try to do it every year so that you don't get a surprise bill because, ooh, you guys didn't catch that or something like that. So this thing should be ready other than the tires, so we'll get them switched out. She'll be ready to go to town. Now one thing that we've learned in the past is we always dump the air on the rear axles on the truck so that it levels out. One time we jacked the front end up and when the truck lost its air overnight, apparently the truck rolls ahead, even though the parking brakes are on, but the truck settles, rolls ahead, kicked it off the jack, fell down onto the ground, it was bad and just fortunate no one got hurt. That is something always to do, dump the airbag so it levels out right away. Hey, check out this, uh, this cool tool set of one inch impact sockets. There's even a ratchet for some reason. I picked this up on Amazon because I was sick of not having the one inch drive stuff that we are always in need of. And it pretty much has every size in it from inch and five eighths to three and an eighth. I'll put the link in the description if you guys have been looking for it. I know I've been looking for a set like this for a long time and finally found one for a reasonable price. So. Go check it out. These pretty chrome 20 inch bumpers are sure pretty, but it sure makes it for a pain in the butt to switch tires. Can't get under the truck decent at all. Good thing the floor's just been clean because I'm going under. No, I'm not gonna lay under there as I jack it up. 
I may not be the smartest, but I'm smarter than doing that. So I'm gonna jack both sides up at the same time or relatively the same time so the whole front end's up in the air. bigger air compressor. The one from 1995 when the old shop was built is definitely not big enough for this gun. I'll also put this uh, tire remover tool rolly cart thing in the description also if you guys are interested. It saves your fingers, your back, it just is really handy. It's really handy, especially for putting them back on. If you guys are interested, it'll be in the description below. Look at that tire, how oh, it's needing alignment, I think, huh? That's what we were talking about. Yeah, she's chopping like a... Who should we have a line at this time? We've had like, what, three guys do it? Yeah, it's been ridiculous. How many? Our trucks are always out of alignment for some reason. Could be because of that Tony Highway 22 that is like a dirt cow path. That it is. What do you got? I don't know, but your big yeah, dog it's... tail got my face. It's full. You know the other night that thing was uh, waving around in the actual video, it's got such long hair we should give it yeah, a haircut. Yeah, no, I got an extension to get it up higher, but now it's like really big and stupid -er than before. So I got Grandpa now heading to Millbank, South Dakota to Twin Valley to get tires. We are going to bring the corn planter in here and unhook it because we got some people coming to work on it tomorrow, which is going to be a cool little video. Gonna go put it in cold storage till the yard dries off enough that we can unfold it in the yard and make sure that it plants and operates the way that it should. Then that'll be ready to go, I think. We've pretty much done everything to this planter that needs to be done. It's just some fine tuning things. So off to the cold storage shed over there. Oh my gosh. I drove on his lawn a little bit. He's gonna be very upset. It's very annoying having to get into that door all the time. The big 50 foot door in this shed, garage here, shed being in the way. That's very annoying. Well, we're in. Until it's a nicer day, we'll be back for you, 84. Hey, look at all that nice chemical from Egg Chem Solutions. Did you know that Randy ripped a hole in the bag? Yeah. He set the pallet too close and ripped a hole in one of the bags. So I don't know what's taking Merlin so long with them tires, but I didn't like what I was hearing back here. What, what's it's broke? What's the hold up? It doesn't start. <laughs> it doesn't start. The radio's left on. I'm blaming it on Eric. You were the last one to drive it. Actually, it might have been Tony. Tony, you left the radio on. This is a common issue. Opposites attract, so you go black on red. Okay. It's still dead air. <laughs> I'm gonna slow cook this one. You can't charge on 200 amps. I ain't charging it, I'm jump starting. <laughs> So basically that truck is coming in here now for a battery charge. Drive shaft U-joints, two U-joints need to be replaced.
thinking is, holy crap, that's heavy. Well, you, it's only gotta go down an inch. You wanna do that, in? <laughs> there you go. I think that was all it's, yeah, that's all we got for movement. Oh yeah, get some more dirt in there. We'll just take this off so we don't get a big mess then. Well, now it's ruined. Well, you already ruined it. Who's gonna hold this now? Well, is it heavier on this end or is it I don't gonna know. down? We're gonna find out. Oh, she's... Boy, that's gonna suck. Getting that out of there. I wonder if there's a special vibration way that it vibrates if you do it wrong. Or we'll just wonder why it vibrates for the rest of its life. Oh my. We have a... I was sneezing into this earlier. I actually seen you doing that. Which That's way was the Zerk? It fell straight down, right? Right. So, I don't know if it matters. <laughs> probably does. Is there any weights on it? Up with that end and down? That's probably the only way now. Oh my. Rotate. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> How's that taste? Like salt off the road. Um. <laughs> this is heavy. Yeah, hold on. Take it to your shoulder and slide it out. Go that way. Wow, that was amazingly heavy. Woo! <sighs> Almost died. So somewhere up here, I put here. They are. Oh, one U joints. Here we go. Should have maybe put the basket on, that'd been safer. Please comment below on how you're supposed to do U-joints, because I don't know. How about you hit gently on this, yep. pop it up. Yeah. Is that Merlin? Merlin's alive. Did you bring Taco Bell? Was that ginger? I don't know. Well, first you have to have the weight on this and not that, though. Well, I don't know. That would help. Maybe some air hammer action, huh? I think so. How about you hit down here now, like a man? A ginger man. Gingerly man. So what I did when I was doing the combine drive shaft well, is I snapped this cap off, and this was a pain. <laughs> yes. Keep hitting downwards on it. See now, I think why you have to do it gingerly is you don't want to bend the yoke apart and spring the yoke, because that wouldn't be good. We gotta put the caps on. We are ready to insert. Let's just jam a hammer. All right, so you got the weight up? You good to go? Yeah, we are good. Which end are you doing? <laughs> Mine. Let you do yours. Okay, don't pull it. I'm putting, I'm nothing holding it. Getting sick of holding my weight. Okay, pull away. Didn't even explode the uh, chrome socket. 
and project complete. Tighten it up real tight, and here's a pen to paint the letters. To paint the letters? Yeah. I suppose. And he thought I was joking about painting tires. No way! I thought you said you were going to paint them well. Well, I got to do a second coat, thank you very much. Looks like someone sneezed on it with a bloody nose. I wonder what working in a safe environment is like. <laughs> Some people's kids, you just... Oh, it's so uncalled for. Thanks for watching again today, guys. I appreciate you watching. This planter, pretty much done. We have very few things left to do to it that you probably will not see. Got to paint a tire tomorrow. And we have some awesome upgrades happening to this and our Terrigator, which you will see in the next video that I will be filming tomorrow. So I'm super excited for that. Do not forget to hit subscribe and the little bell so that you know when I post that next video that you, you've got to see it, you got to watch it. Thanks for that. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and I would appreciate to hear your comments below on what you thought of this video. And thanks again for watching. See you next time.